If you're a nature photographer and you like being out in the outdoors with your telephoto lens shooting pictures of oh birds or deer or even butterflies and insects and snakes, whatever it is, uh, but you've really wanted to have a big long telephoto lens but either couldn't afford it or just didn't want to haul something so massive around, Swarovski Optic has an absolutely wonderful option for you. It's called the Swarovski Optic Spotting Scope and Telephoto Lens System. And what we do is uh, we made a lens called the TLS APO. It's a lens in a housing designed to go on any interchangeable lens camera, whether it's I've got my Pentax here, got a Nikon, could be a Sony, could be a Canon, doesn't matter what it is. This is a lens that pops on there and goes onto your spotting scope instantly perfectly mounted, dead center, rugged as heck. This spotting scope now becomes a 900 millimeter f9.5 lens, which I can then zoom all the way up to 2100 millimeters f22. That's some reach. You can go out and get stuff at that point. Sound too good to be true? Not really. Uh, number one, the scope is manual focusing. If you were looking through it as a spotting scope, you're manually focusing on something, a bird, a deer, whatever, say, oh my gosh, I want to get a picture of that. Pop your camera onto here. Now you've already focused, so you're probably pretty close anyway, but you're going to fine tune and get your shots. All of your automatic systems will work, but there is a catch. This has one f-stop. In this case, 900 millimeter f9.5. If I zoom it up to 1500 millimeters, the f number drops. So in order to change exposures, with the uh, camera, you either have to change your shutter speeds or your ISOs. Set the camera on aperture preferred, dial in, usually I start with ISO 1600. On a bright sunny day, I've got a four thousandth of a second. As the, as the sun goes away, my shutter speeds will drop to maybe a, a thousandth of a second. The old uh, inverse rule of shutter speed and, and focal length, since I'm dealing with almost a thousand millimeter lens, I like to have my shutter speeds at a thousandth of a second or quicker, if possible. The wonderful thing about today's modern DSLRs, like my uh, Nikon D7100 or my Pentax K3, ISO 4000 on these cameras is amazingly good, better than 400 was just a few years ago. So if you want to take really great prints, you can do that and the grain is not there. You can get great shutter speeds. You can even do flight shots. Um, is it easy to do? Heck no, this is a long telephoto lens. How do you get good at it? You go out and practice. Uh, just like everything else in this world, go out and find, if you want to do flying birds, find a place where they're going by with a regular series and just learn how to get them in, in the frame, do your focusing, shoot away. Always review on your screen, make sure that you're getting what you think you're getting. The wonderful thing about digital is you can preview all your shots, exposure, white balance, uh, sharpness and all that stuff and then make any changes you need to uh, on the fly. One of the key things you're going to need to do when you go out shooting is make sure that your scope and camera assembly is balanced on top of your tripod head. Swarovski Optic makes a spotting scope rail too that allows you to change the balance point. So essentially if you're out there bird watching, you can have your scope set up so it's balanced. Then when you put your camera on it, where it's tail heavy, you can slide it up forward and now you're balanced again. Um, definitely. Having a balanced system helps out with your sharpness. Any little shake with this kind of magnification will blur your details just enough so it's a nice ID photo but you can't make a nice print off of it. One of the really neat things about today's modern digital SLR is not only are the, is the still image quality tremendous, but you can shoot videos through them. 1080p video, incredible uh, image quality. Put it up on the big screen TV and it looks like you're watching the Nature Channel or something like that and you do it yourself. The one thing I don't like about having with the SLRs is when you put it on video you're doing live, live view off of the LCD screen. That means I have to get out my reading glasses be, to be able to make sure that I've got my focus correct and all that. Having a camera that has focus peaking will help for sure but still I'm squinting on a little dinky screen. One of the uh, cameras that I really do like for doing video is a, a mirrorless micro four thirds type camera like a Panasonic or an Olympus. When I slide it on here, I have an electronic viewfinder, 2.4 million pixels on the viewfinder. I can get all my focusing correct perfectly, just the same as I would looking through the, the aerial viewfinder on my SLR. I can preview exposure, I can preview white balance, I can do all kinds of really great things, 
and following focus with the video as I'm shooting my, my animals and the, the image quality is absolutely stunning, especially considering that the magnification we're getting. If you go over, go out of the photography side and go over into the world of video and all that and look at the price of the equipment there, it's absolutely staggering how expensive something like a 900 millimeter lens would be for your video camera. So you can do um, some absolutely wonderful stuff at a fraction of the cost. And to be honest with you, at, at some point now, when I get a really good bird or a really good deer or something like that in front of me, I have to decide whether I shoot video first or whether I shoot stills because I'm actually enjoying shooting the videos more you, and it reaches a bigger audience uh, for sure. And, and, and depending if you wanna try and make a living doing this, uh, that, that could be a definite consideration. Bottom line is, it doesn't matter whether you have a micro four thirds camera or a traditional DSLR, doing photography through the spotting scope is an incredibly efficient way and an effective way to get long distance photos of wildlife, race cars, sunrises and sunsets, anything that you see that's way far out there and you just cannot get it with your, with your normal telephoto lens.